And today, I want to talk to us, a very present us, about what it means to live under a different king in his kingdom as a body, as family. Because you might be expecting me to tell you to go to 1 Corinthians 12 when we talk about being the body of Christ. But actually, I think Titus 2, which is where we're going, Timothy Titus, go find it now while I talk. It can be a bit tricky. It's just a little book. Gives us a way to be family in a way that is not nuclear, in a way that is me and you and you and me and me and us and all of us together, them, us, all of us. Because when you look around the room and quickly do it, you can see that there are people who are not your uncles and aunties, but actually are. Not your grandparents by blood or marriage, but people who have been praying for you unknowingly. There are children now running around upstairs that I know you guys dolt on and delight in, even if sometimes they're a bit fast, fast, speedy. You love them. We love each other. Well, I hope we do. Uh, Because this is the instruction of God. And Paul sends this letter to Timothy, who is on Titus, a raggy island in the Mediterranean. A group of people who lived within Rome's culture. But even within that culture, they lived very much to the ends of the extremes of that. So much so that the Romans, who were so keen on laboring everything but them, barbarians, are you a Roman? Great. Are you not? Sorry, barbarian. Doesn't matter where you come from, barbarian, not Roman. Sorry, not sorry. So much did these Cretans live outside even the power of Rome that the Romans actually called them Cretans. Now, that's a bit of an insult if you're probably... 50 or over. (laughs) Uh, So here we go. Uh, A Cretan is someone who is dull or stupid, slow to learn, uh, also known as a drunkard. Um, This was a solid insult. And so much was this poor little island, which looks quite beautiful on the old Facebook. Some really nice beaches. Timothy was sent to this island and he had a whole bunch of Cretans, Titus, sorry. And Paul gives them a letter, a pre-internet recording, so to speak, where he can get up and say, this is how you live. You people who live on Crete, but have bound yourself to Christ and to his kingdom, this is how you should live as a wider family and people. This was a preordained sermon from the most central player of our New Testament letters. And he says, don't live as Cretans. Don't be stupid. Don't be drunk. Don't be starting fights. Don't be not going home to your families or sitting in the street. Live a different way. But also, Paul was saying, don't live as Romans. Because the Romans got it wrong too. The Romans had this thing called the Mos Memorium, which was a way of living. And they talked about these are the virtues that you should keep. And on first glance, they're pretty good, like faithfulness and virtue and gravitas. Being, you know, happy within yourself and your standing. Having piety. Eh. The problem is, it didn't actually work like this. (laughs) The faithfulness that has been encouraged was actually faithfulness to yourself. And the piety that they're like, okay, let's sort that out, was actually just for show. The gravitas that people walked around thinking about, because this was an unwritten moral code. It just existed everywhere. It didn't have to be written down. This is only for us who don't know it later on. talked about gaining honor and keeping face rather than interacting with other people. And so this letter in Titus 2 is saying, don't be Cretans and don't be Romans, but be people who follow Christ. 
And is discipleship at work here? As we give away an old kingdom for a new king. But there's also a togetherness about it that hopefully you will see as we read through that you can't do it without me and I need you to help me. And we need each other to be a good community together as God's people living in a different way under a new king. So here we go, Titus 2. But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded and dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, and love and steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderous or slaves to too much wine. They are to teach what is good and to train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, to be pure and working at home. We're getting to that, don't panic. <laughs> kind and submissive to their husbands. We're getting to that as well. That the word of God may not be reviled. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Young men, show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. And all your teachings show integrity, dignity, and sound speech, so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Slaves are be to submissive to their masters in everything, to be well-pleasing and not argumentative, not stealing, but showing in all good faith, so in everything they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior. Now, I'm just going to pause there, because there's a few things that kind of give us a bit of a panic. <laughs> The old men of Crete, now their bones aching, uh, unable so much to go fishing because there wasn't much else to do there. Not a great place for farming, and if you did farm, it was awkward and hard and rocky. And what did you do when you were old? Well, old men in Crete, they sat around and they got absolutely hammered. And they told stories about, you know, the biggest fish that they ever caught and the largest waves they ever caught in. And, and they basically just sat around hammered, causing mischief, which was actually trouble. Bragging about themselves, putting down everybody else. And then there are the old women too, whose eyesight had gone now, so they probably couldn't do those small tasks. Well, conventionally, they sat around and also got hammered, so yay, Crete. <laughs> There are cultural contexts that are being spoken into here. They are Cretans. And Paul is calling them out of it. He's saying, don't do this anymore. Old men, now that your body is kind of leaving you, don't sit around and drink, but be sound in your faith. Sound in your love and endure. There were times when these men would just take themselves off to the rocks and drop themselves into the sea because they believed they had no value and no reason. We need our poppers, our uncles. Be sound in faith and love and your physical endurance, but not only that, your spiritual endurance. Run the race well. Of course, there is this context of the older woman being told to teach the younger woman to love their husbands because, well, they didn't all. Could you imagine coming home from somewhere like the market and you're like 14 and your dad says, by the way, you're marrying Bob down the road and you're like, ooh, Bob, you're gross. Bob's like 50. Ew. Ew. Bob smells like fish. It wasn't the love romances that we married each other now for. It wasn't that, oh, Bob, oh, you smell like fish. Oh. <laughs> Someone must love that smell. <laughs> In Christ, the women were encouraged to love their husbands, even though it wasn't the easiest thing to do. Even if they didn't want to, Bob. 
but to treat them with respect and dignity and to not sit around like they saw in the patterns of the older men and the older woman by sitting in a home just drinking away. You're getting a picture of Crete. There's a lot of wine happening there. But instead, that the love of God in them would help them love these husbands who maybe weren't their first choice and to help them love these husbands who potentially sat at the top because that moss memoriam that we showed you before was built for the men, for the young, fit, strong men. And everybody else, well, sorry. And so these men too, Paul calls out. These men, he calls them to love and trust Jesus. Likewise, the younger men be self-controlled. Not out for yourself. Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. And in your teaching, show integrity and dignity. There are these conversations that they are being called in to live as different men because these men now love Jesus. Don't be like Romans and don't be like Cretans. Be like Christ. Older men, be like Christ. Older women, be like Christ. Younger women, be like Christ. We are called to live a different way, not to be Cretans. Old angry drunks or young angry drunks, hardened by life. But there is something in us that we live to the cultures of our world. And so if there are Cretans in Creek, what are Whangareians in Whangarei? I've practiced that before. What is the culture that we live in as families or not families, where we value perhaps, and it's not a perhaps because I know, nuclear, power, nuclear family groups, where we say, look at you with your two children and a nice dog and a fence and a house. Well done. The rest of you, oh, when are you going to get married? <laughs> or perhaps, as Whangareians, we say, well, Nana and Papa, it's time for you to go now. Off to the rest home, we'll visit you every two or three months. Perhaps we say, well, Papa, way back in the day, you didn't have the internet, and now we have technology, so we don't need your stories about how whatever worked. As God's people, living in, under a new king in a new kingdom, we are called to value and care for and love on and seek wisdom from. And last week, I said a few words that often, don't often get said in church. I said money and I said sex, and here's another one I'm going to say, domestic violence. If you look around our Whangareian world, you'll see that the statistics in our town are similar to the towns across New Zealand, which has one of the highest levels of domestic violence. This is serious stuff. We're partners and wives and children living in not loving relationships, are broken and busted and pushed down and tread on by the ones who should love them. And we say, oh, that's awful. And it is awful because it grows and it impacts. But among our families too, there are things that are left unsaid. And I struggled how to say this to us because what do I do? Numbers of domestic violence against wives and children statistically in our churches is the same as it is outside. And even worse, women or children in those places will stay longer in their marriages because they hear those words and those verses about divorce and about being submissive to your husband. It is more likely overall that a woman in a church will die or have extreme violence than it will outside the church because we are called to be submissive.
the words of Titus 2 are a code to say, don't live as the world does. But they're also a call to acknowledge how the world does live and how awful and furiously mad it is as it destroys the best, one of the best gifts we have. And that has crept over and is in the church. Well, what do we do with it? We say, quietly come and talk to me. We can put something in a pocket if you're afraid. Let's talk about the proper things because we are a proper family. If we are to be people who care for each other, who hear the wisdom of our poppers and our nanas, let's hear the wisdom. I'd like you all to put your heads down and close your eyes, not because we're having an altar call, don't worry, but some of the things that I might be saying might just be a little bit too close to home. And so if there's anyone having a reaction, I don't want to see anyone seeing any of it. God will see. But if we are being this family where we listen and we value the words and the honor of our older men, are we listening to them? as they talk to us about what wealth of value they have, about how they have been dads and sons and brothers and watch many hard things come and go, can we be listening to our older men? And next week at ladies' camp, we're having a panel. And on that panel, there's gonna be people much wiser than me. Can we talk about those hard things? Not just put them away and pretend they're happy and just leave them. But as people who follow God and live in his kingdom, can we talk about these things that we don't talk about? Like maybe at ladies camp, what about miscarriages? Because they've happened. Can we talk about what it means not to have children? Can we talk what it means or not to be married, whether that's a joy or a curse? Men, I don't know what secret things went on at men's camp. Young men, can you show yourself to be a role model of good works in your teaching and your dignity? Let's talk about some other things we don't talk about in church, like addictions and abuses. Yes, done by women as well, but mainly the power that you young men hold in your hands to shape your families and those around you is immense. Young men, can we learn from our older men about the pressures that you carry on your shoulders? Instead of getting drunk like the Cretans do, can we gather together and hear each other's wisdom so that none of you are left alone? Be brave now and open your eyes. As God's people, we can quietly struggle by ourselves and feel like we have to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and just carry on in our world. But we have been given this delicious gift of God and his family that through Christ and with each other, We can pull each other along in this way that we live, not as isolated people, but as a family of older men and older women and of younger men and younger women. And as we do that and learn from each other and grow together as we trust each other and love on each other, we show ourselves to be different. And even if it's a way when we, as a church, say the quiet things loud, these are important things that we need to be discussing. And as you wonder and worry, well, how are we going to do this? How are we going to figure this out? Doing the hard things and having the hard conversations together and giving comfort and love to each other. Look at verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people. 
He is the one that is training us to renounce the ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. The grace of God is what trains us. Verse 12, actually, I made a mistake. It is training us to give up the old way of living in the old kingdom and live under our king in his new kingdom. So yes, we have to take steps, but the step is minimal compared to what Christ is for us. This picture of Jesus, these songs that Sarah and the team have led us in, this is a picture of our king. And we have sung of the pictures of his good love for us. And if we can trust him with our salvation for the good that he brings to this world here and now and for us to come, can we trust him with each other and ourselves? Knowing that he is a good king. Training us to renounce our former way of living and those passions. And then we wait for blessed hope and the appearing glory of our great Savior, God, Jesus Christ, who gave himself up to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify us to be a people for his own possessions who are zealous, keen to do God's works. Church, I've said lots of quiet things out loud. But this is the community that I want us to be. It's not going to happen right now as I step off the stage because we do have to walk slowly with one another. But let's start that conversation. Let's not write off people because perhaps they're not moving as fast as they used to. If you sit down and hear stories, amazing things that happen. So instead of asking, hi, how are you? Ask that this week. And next week, ask, hi, how are you next week? And then next week, now you've had a little bit of fun. What can you tell me from your wisdom? (laughs) At ladies camp, instead of just talking about how nice it is to be able to sleep until half past eight, I mean, it's a great conversation. Can we ask some of our nanas and aunties? Nana, auntie, at my age, what is a piece of wisdom that you wished you could have known? Our young men, can the old men gather around you and encourage you? Would you let them do that? Not having to be strong and carry your loads alone, but would you let these poppers and uncles, these kuros that exist within our church say, I've been there and I know how it's done and I know it's hard and I will pray for you and you will get through. Titus 2, talk to a specific people in a specific place living in a specific culture. We, Whangarei Central Baptist Church, are a specific people living in a specific place with a specific culture. But just like that church in Crete, we are called out of it and into God's kingdom. So let's start living in his kingdom. Under our new king. Amen. Let me pray as Sarah and the team come up. Lord Jesus, we thank you, first of all, that you are the one that trains us. That while we take little steps in obedience, you take big steps towards us in love and encouragement and faithfulness. And you give us this wider family, our own little Titus 2 church, to be a part of where we can seek the knowledge of our poppers and nanas, and feel the support for our families and for us as individuals, where we live as a group of people rather than just individuals. And the quiet things that maybe have never been spoken about or said or addressed, 
that we can find safety among ourselves and care among ourselves to speak some of those silent things out loud for our own good. God, you talk about bringing to light things that cause us evil, things that hinder us and bring us pain and in bringing them to you, they are healed and they are restored and they are made new. God, among us, there are many stories of your faithfulness, of being brought to you and being made new and healed, of being given the courage and the hope and the bravery. Let us tell these stories to each other. May we be your church. We pray. Amen.